So today we're joined by Nand and Veer, who've made a very useful demo to control your mobile device whilst in a vehicle. But before we dive into that, welcome to the show, both of you. And maybe we can start with a quick intro of who you both are. Yeah, sure. Thank you very much for having us on the show. So my name is Veer Gadodia. Um, I'm a senior in high school studying in Boston right now. Um, and, you know, one of the passions that kind of me and others shared, you know, over time has been uh, computer science and specifically that of machine learning. And, um, you know, we've done many projects together. And I think um, TensorFlow has been one kind of library that, you know, we've really been interested in and have kind of delved into a lot of different projects with. And so I'll let Nand kind of talk a little bit about himself as well. Yeah, so my name is Nand. I'm, uh, I'm a sophomore in high school in uh, Bangalore, India. And yeah, I've, I've had a similar passion for computer science and machine learning. And uh, I'm really into projects that use uh, cutting edge machine learning technologies to solve real world problems or automate tasks. And um, that's kind of the focus of a lot of our projects. And uh, this is one example of that where we dive into using TensorFlow.js with React Native. Awesome, that's, uh, that's great to hear. Thank you again for joining us today. So maybe you can tell us more about what you've actually created and what inspired you to make it. Yeah, so I think one problem that kind of really stuck out to me and Nand was kind of the uh, safety hazard of many people using their phones uh, while driving in cars. And, you know, that's kind of a source of uh, many different accidents. Um, and we were kind of coming together to brainstorm ideas on how we could kind of pre not prevent, but even, even reduce the, num the number of people um, kind of who face accidents due to this issue. And, you know, one current solution that many people use are voice assistants in cars, but we kind of felt, you know, from personal experience and talking to other people that um, they're not always the most accurate or reliable solution. Um, and sometimes uh, gestures can just be more intuitive for people. And, you know, upon doing some research, we found that some car companies were actually incorporating gesture control systems into their cars, but some of them turned out to be very like luxury cars. And we wanted to kind of recreate this idea um, of gesture control in um, a very reasonable and kind of cost efficient way. And that's how we kind of came across this idea of using a mobile app uh, combined with in-app machine learning to detect gestures. Awesome, that sounds really useful actually. And I must say, uh, I've been in some very noisy cars in my time where like speech recognition is just not gonna work as well as it should. So uh, it's great to see you looking to gesture as well. So maybe we can see a demo of this in action. Okay, so here we can see that Veer is currently in the car and uh, the mobile app detects the gestures made by him through the uh, uh, front facing camera. And then we uh, basically control Spotify music and notifications and calls and stuff like that, uh, which people would usually use a voice assistant or directly use a phone with. And uh, it just makes it more quick and responsive. And as you can also see, the algorithm is um, kind of drawing these dots that are kind of mimicking the gesture of the hand. Um, that's just for visual purposes to see that how it's actually detecting the gesture. So um, we're using the hand pose machine learning model coupled with TensorFlow.js. So this mo model gives us an estimation of where all the points uh, or all the uh, joints of the hand are in a 3D space. So we can use this uh, uh, along with a few uh, custom models to kind of detect what gesture is being made. And then we just uh, feed that into a bunch of APIs and uh, phone function functions to uh, create this app. That's really, really cool to see. And I guess, um, is this just for pose or is it able to detect like a gesture over time as well? Like if I, if I swipe my hand to the right, is it going to detect this, the swiping action or just the fact my hand is out like a hand? 
Yeah. So right now it just detects if it's just a pose. So if it's like、yeah. a hand or a finger.、Um, but we want to kind of extend that so we can kind of detect motions over time. Like I know one intuitive motion to kind of turn the volume up, volume up of like a the sound would be kind of rotating your finger maybe. So、sure. um, I think that would be a cool kind of future、uh, application that we could kind of extend into. Yeah, definitely. I'd, I'd be interested to see that. We also have a bunch of delays right now、um, in the app itself, like. If you hold out your hand for a half a second and then be,、uh, and then pull it down, it doesn't detect anything. So there are a few、um, noise noise corrections you can say that we have done, but it's not perfect.、It、definitely has to be improved a lot. Sure, as with any、uh, demo or software, it's always continually improving. I'm sure. So, <laughs>、uh, but a really great demo, and I'm curious to know more about why you chose TensorFlow.js for this creation. Maybe you can tell us more about that, and if you had any prior experience of TensorFlow.js, or is this your first time using that? So we have had、uh, extensive experience using TensorFlow.js in the web, like using、um, JavaScript and HTML. But、mm -hmm. this was our first time exploring it in a mobile app,、okay. and、um, we use it because、um, their pre-built models are among the best in the world. So they have a bunch of these、uh, really good pre-trained models that are created using、uh, extensive data sets that are very、uh, hard to recreate. And also, this project was done over、um, a hackathon for a span of twenty-four hours. So we felt that、oh, wow. using the protocol JS was a very、uh, was was the best way to go. Right, and especially given the fact that we wanted to explore this idea of machine learning inside an app, and kind of like the TensorFlow Lite,、uh, which is kind of. Uh, the machine learning for mobile apps kind of really stood out to us, and especially given that me and Nand we've made projects in we've, which we've done we, we've used TensorFlow to do cough detection and、uh, different types of you know detections in the web. So we kind of wanted to recreate that, but in the mobile app, and so that's why we went towards TensorFlow. Awesome, and you use React Native for this, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Yeah, and of course, also React Native is a JavaScript library, so TensorFlow.js was pretty much a,、uh, the best option. Excellent, good to hear. And、uh, if people want to try this out for themselves, how can they do that? Is there a website or GitHub code available? Yeah, so we have a GitHub repository, which、um, I can actually make it public for anyone to view.、Um, and so you、Wonderful. know, anyone、yeah. can kind of download and run the code and see for themselves. We'll put that in the comments after the show, so everyone can go check out that link, of course. So thank you for that. I'm also curious what challenges you might have faced whilst creating this project. Yeah, so I think、uh, you know we've had a lot of challenges over the way, especially considering that this is one of our first times doing machine learning in an app.、Um, and you know, I think the first challenge was just kind of conceptualizing how we're going to get to this end product of having this gesture control on the phone. So you know, I think one of the really key things was for us to actually have a document and kind of map out the different steps. So we first decided to you know make a skeleton structure. Um, of what the app is going to look like, and then devote all our time next to just integrating a machine learning model into it, and just kind of breaking this into different steps was something that really helped us.、Um, and kind of building on that、uh, was kind of the infrastructure for authentication.、Uh, you know, when integrating with Spotify and the different APIs for just making it as intuitive as possible, building that infrastructure of authentication and tokens was something that was challenging for us.、Um, but you know, just spending time at it, and again, just planning everything down. I think really helped us get through that. Awesome, yeah, it's amazing you managed to do all of that in just a, a, a couple of days at a hackathon as well. That's a very impressive stuff. <laughs> so, where are you planning to take this in the future? Do you have any other projects lined up、uh, for TensorFlow.js? Yeah, so we really want to kind of、um, kind of extend the functionality of the app. So, you know, right now we're kind of emphasizing just kind of music control. We have playing and pausing of music, skipping songs, and this is all integrated with Spotify. But you know, we'd like to extend this to accepting calls, showing notifications from Slack or for work, or you know, iMessage. And I think this is something that could be really powerful, just to extend the functionality to a lot of the different things that people would do in cars. Notification one: Hey, Veer, how are you doing? Notification two: We have a meeting at four. Notification three: We need to discuss the project. And I think React Native is particularly one、uh, really useful resource for this because、um, this is something you can't really achieve through a web、um, a web platform, but you know through mobile it's something that's very intuitive, very interactive, and you know very easy, especially if it's right、um, you know on the side of you in the car. 
Totally. I think you're one of the first people to embrace our React Native implementation, actually. So it's great to see a use case like this where you can actually then integrate with the phone to answer the phone call or something extra, which you can't traditionally do via JavaScript, but you can still leverage these technologies to now do that, which is great. And what about you, Nand? Anything else? Uh, yeah, so uh, just wanted to add that we would like to improve the uh, gesture control by um, removing noise, such as, let's say, someone sitting in the back of the car. Um, we don't want to detect their hand and also maybe add in uh, continuous motion gestures and stuff like that. Yeah, that makes sense. I think uh, motion detection uh, for the gesture would be very useful to have more sophisticated gestures going on. And I think, yeah, a little bird told me that someone in the community might be making something uh, for gesture recognition. So maybe you can take some of their code and use it in your project as well, which would be super cool. So yeah, thank you again for you both uh, coming on the show today. It's great to see what you've been creating and I look forward to see what you do in the future. Thank you very much for having us. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having us. Uh, super fun.